Hi, I'm Ellen McCauley and I'm at Pray It Off in Syracuse, New York. And I'd like to direct everyone's attention to the back of the, of the log this week. And there's some weight loss quotes that I want you to review in small group. But I just want to highlight a couple of them. If you want to grow thinner, diminish your dinner. I like that one. I like it. And I like this one too. Gluttony is an emotional escape. It's a sign that something is eating us. And this is a good one too. Your body is the baggage you must carry through life. The more excess the baggage, the shorter the trip. All right? And then I love this. One way to get thin is to reestablish a purpose in life. I would have given up a million times over in those eight years if I didn't know I had to come here every week. I would have given up. I mean, what would it have been like four years ago if I stood here and went, I'm uh, disbanding Pray It Off because I'm frustrated. I, I can't lose weight. I mean, I hear some people say, I'm discouraged, I'm frustrated. Give me eight years and say that. But what I'm going to say to you in the meantime is, have you changed something? Have you kicked it up? Did you try Whole30? Did you try uh, Mediterranean? Did you try the Lent diet? Did you try moving more? you got to try things. And it wasn't until I tried um, Whole30, and it works for me. I I'm not shoving it on anyone. I'm not saying if you don't do that, you're not going to lose weight. But I have seen where people in this group have told me that it does kickstart their metabolism, they feel better. And one quote that I wanted to say to you tonight that's not on this list, by saying no to ourselves, we say yes to the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And that was in one of my Lenten books, and I really thought about that, because isn't that what, you know, fasting is? Not necessarily from food, but from an activity or whatever. By our conscious effort to say no, we're saying, Holy Spirit, help me. Also, my favorite by Winston Churchill, never, never, never quit. Never, ever. And then I like this one too. The tragedy in life doesn't lie in not reaching your goal. The tragedy lies in having no goal to reach. You got to have a goal. I mean, one day somebody said something to me, and they, they said, I, I, my goal is, and this is a person that struggled for years, and I said, oh my gosh, you use the G word? You have a goal? That makes me so happy. How many times have I written on your sheet? Goal? Question mark? Goal? You got to have a goal. I sit here right now saying, well, I have a goal. I want to get to 178, then 171. You got to have the goals, even when they seem forever away. So review those in small group. And then I also want to tell you about this next article, which I don't like this article. I love it and want to marry it, have children with it. It's one of the best articles ever. It is The Ups of Lent by Monsignor Richard Hillgartner. I love it. He has taken prayer, fasting, and almsgiving and called it The Ups of Lent. Lift up, give up, and take up. The discipline of Lent is sacrifice. But are we merely called to self-discipline as a mean of, uh, means of self-improvement? It's one thing to give up chocolate, but does that help the world? Do you get a call from President Trump saying, thank you for giving up chocolate because now, now I can you know, do some things that I couldn't do before. I mean, it doesn't really change the world per se. But if you lift up your prayer, you give up chocolate, and then you take up some of your time helping others. That's what Lent's all about. And, and, and everything on Ash Wednesday says, take care not to perform righteous deeds in order that people may see them. And yesterday at work, everyone was like, uh, what you do? What you doing for Lent? How, how, what you giving up for Lent? And, and I'm like, oh, I, I, I kind of like treat Lent as, as a season of, of lifting up and giving up and taking up. And they're like, huh? 
you know? And then I tried to explain it, and they were walking away really fast. But the thing is, all they wanted me to say was chocolate, and I didn't say that. I wanted to give them a Lenten manifesto, but the point is, Lent is personal. It, when I ask you to talk about it as a table, it's just to share your ideas. But all three have to be part of the formula of Lent. Jesus teaches us about living a life of holiness, which includes <coughs> sacrifice. And sacrifice means resisting temptations. But we have the Holy Spirit to help us. Why didn't the Mosaic Law work? Because people were too weak. There was ten commandments, and by the end of it, they just couldn't do it. And by the end, there was a, a thousand rules and laws. Uh, rules and, 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 and different things about the Ten Commandments, the law didn't work because we're weak. And it isn't until the Holy Spirit comes in us and helps us. The only reason I weigh 188 today is because God helped me every step of the way. Even when I didn't lose weight, He was still helping me. He does things in His own time. In prayer, we lift up our hearts to the Lord. And you know what I thought of this week that I really want everyone to listen to me because this is mind-blowing. We don't have to make an appointment with God. We don't have to say, God, are you free on Monday, March 6th? All we have to do is talk to him. That's amazing that the creator of the universe, that the creator of life itself is available to us at all times. At all times. That I can stop right now and go, my Lord and my God. And he's right there. He's right there to listen. That is mind-blowing. And yet we don't take enough time to pray when God's sitting there going, hey, excuse me, I'm right here. I'm right here. You need some help about resisting that whopper with cheese? Hello, I'll help. you got to ask me. We sometimes forget to ask because do we, we don't really want the answer. Sometimes we have to ask and listen to the answer. But we also have to give praise and gratitude. It's not gimme, gimme, gimme. It's Jesus, you are awesome. Thank you for your sacrifice. I want to open my heart to you. And I don't even know what to say. Can you have the Holy Spirit intercede on my behalf? But here's the point we all need help with. Listen to God's response. Listen, listen, listen. It's so powerful that he's there at every minute. Our relationship with God is rooted in prayer, but expressed and manifested in actions. It's one thing to say, oh yeah, I'm a card-carrying member of Pray It Off. And then have someone say, but haven't you been in that group a, a year, and haven't you gained 30 pounds in this past year? So you're in a weightless group, but you gained 30 pounds? Nobody has, I'm just making that up. But you can be part of the group, but you also have to have the actions that show that you're believing in the tenets. It'd be the same thing as someone who says, oh yes, I'm a Catholic. Well, which mass do you go to? Well, I don't go to mass. Oh, well, how often do you get communion? I don't, I don't get communion. What about confession? No. Any of the sacraments? Not really. I said, but you're a Catholic? Really? Are they a practicing Catholic? Are we a practicing member of Pray It Off? Also, fasting, as I mentioned before, is not just food. And I, my daughter, Carol Ann, has three children, six, three, and almost one, and a husband, and they give up TV for Lent. I asked last week, and I think there was one person, Mary maybe, who gave up Lent, TV for Lent, and I said to Bob, think we should try that next year? And he's like, let's talk. <laughs> Let's pray about it. I think God will say no. You know? I mean, come on, TV! Oh, it's crazy. But I, God bless her. God bless her for that. There's so much we can fast from. Our social media for a day. Uh, Facebook for a day. Fast from negative thinking. Also, cutting back on watching television, even if you don't give it up entirely. And I started at the bottom of this page, and I, I want you to talk about it in small group. 
If I give up chocolate only to replace it by eating ice cream, then there is no real benefit. Or if I give up or cut back on watching television but replace it by playing video games and being online, have I really given up anything? I mean, one person last Lent gave up bread and they gained five pounds during Lent because they were eating everything else but bread. So it's like, really think about that when you're concentrating on what you want to do. And it's not too late. Some people said, well, you know, I didn't start Lent on Wednesday, so I guess I'll have to do it next year. I'm like, it's Thursday. It's Thursday. You missed one day. You can do it now. You don't have to wait till Lent, you know? Also, almsgiving. Almsgiving isn't just coughing up some money in the basket at church. Almsgiving is bringing in some food for the food pantry. It's shampoo for the food pantry. It's going through your clothes. And you might say, well, all my clothes fit me. Do you need 70 pair of black pants? Maybe you could donate 20 pairs of those black pants. I don't know about you, but I think I have, I, I, I have so many different pairs of black pants. But you can give up some of those to the needy. Also, this is something you might not have ever thought about. Coming to pray it off, even when you don't feel like it, when you might have gained a pound or two, to help your table mates, to show them support and love, that's a form of almsgiving. When you don't feel like reaching out and, and giving kindness or that extra mile, that's a form of almsgiving. Lent is about renewing our life for Christ. It's to help us get those cardinal virtues, prudence, justice, fortitude, temperance, leading a virtuous life. In our lifting up, giving up, and taking up, may we be vigilant in our sacrifices. Do you hear that word? Sacrifices. And strong in resisting temptation, and so get all the more caught up in the love of God through his Son's cross and resurrection and what does that resurrection give us all hope hope and eternal life i'm done daddy <laughs>